Hello everyone and welcome to the first video of the crypto analysis channel Bitcoin. Here you'll see crypto analysis of all sorts of altcoins, Bitcoin, market news and so on. Today we'll talk a little bit about why you should or should not invest in Bitcoin in 2018. First of all, in this channel I'm not going to give any financial advice, I'm not an accredited financial advisor. So anything I'll say is just interpretation of the facts and I'll try my best not to give any personal opinions. I'll just read out the facts, show both sides to see the pros and cons and get everyone talking about it. And so you can, so everyone can make your own decisions. In the beginning of 2018, Bitcoin started with a lower price than its all time high, which was around $20,000. $20, uh, let's take a look at the graph. December 20th, it was the all-time high or close to December 20th. And then it just started going down really fast, all the way down to about $6,000, $6,500. And it went up again. Now it went down and started to going up. A lot of people are wondering if you should still invest in Bitcoin, if it's safe, if it's not. And just by looking at the graph, um, the first tip I have it's never look at the linear scale graph if you're using coin market cap it's a good website to check the prices and graphs of all cryptocurrencies in the market or most big cryptocurrencies in the market as you can see here you have log scale what this does is that instead of having in the linear scale just equal distances between prices so we can see here that between 5,000 10,000 and 15,000 is the same distance it has the same distance of 1% because when the price was around $100 for Bitcoin, a 1% change would be $1. When it's it was around 1000, it's around $10 and so on and at 10,000 it's around $100. So most financial analysts will look at a log scale graph just because then you have the 1% change and the graph doesn't look as crazy because if you look at the linear scale, you see a almost a flat line, but evidently it's not a flat line. And then it just skyrockets in 2017 and now it's going down. But if you look at the log scale, things are not as bad because you have here in 2013 in December as well. So the price of Bitcoin went to around $1,200 and then it went down to 600 so pretty much a 50% loss in a matter of two weeks. And then it kept slowly going down till it hit the bottom of 200, about $200. And then started slowly going up. Only 2017, it just exploded. So as you can see here, we hit all time high around December 20th, then started going down. So we hit $6,000, $60, $500, which is a 65%, 60% loss. Now things are stabilizing. So it's just a good way to analyze the graph. It's look at the log scale. You'll see that things are not as drastic. Obviously, if you compare to the stock market, this is just very, those are ridiculous gains and losses absolutely in a short period of time. But you'll see the bigger trend here. As you can see, it was going down slowly over time. And not slowly going up and now it's stabilizing a little bit we don't know where the price is going to go so from this perspective um the price if you compare to the linear scale if you're just looking at this graph you you think oh my god i'm not gonna invest because it just dropped a ridiculous amount and then it's not going up as fast now but that's this is a this is incorrect i mean the price went down a lot but it's just in the log scale, you can see that percentage wise, it's stabilizing. So from this perspective, it is not that bad of an investment. We'll also look at three reasons to invest in Bitcoin and why not to invest in Bitcoin. There's this article 
from channelfutures.com talking about reasons why you should or should not invest. And it get, this, the website gives three reasons why you should invest. First one, instability is good for Bitcoin. So it's just saying that the stock market is unstable, uh, political sentiment in all, pretty much every continent, every country is in, unstable to a certain degree. So this is good for Bitcoin because Bitcoin is decentralized. No government is behind it. So people might have the tendency to trust something that doesn't have a central government or a central body taking care of it. Um, then it mentions how it's easy to invest in Bitcoin. You just find a broker available to you. If you're in the United States, you have Coinbase, you have GDAX. If you're in Europe, there's a lot more options and anywhere else in the world as well. You just buy Bitcoin and you can leave it at the broker, at the website, but I wouldn't recommend it. There's other ways to safely store all your Bitcoin and just wait or you can use it for transactions. A lot of stores are now accepting Bitcoin for a, a moment. Steam was accepting Bitcoin, but then the price got extremely high and the fees got really high. So they stopped for now because it was getting too expensive for them or people were just not using Bitcoin because it was too expensive to buy a game. And it's low cost compared to a lot of uh, brokers for stocks and futures so if you just register online and then you want to buy bitcoin a lot of them will have a percentage fee some of them will have a fixed fee but usually it shouldn't depending how much you're operating obviously but if you're operating a large amount then you might have a, a little bit of a higher cost but the gains that bitcoin has daily weekly they'll outweigh all the, the fees that you're paying if you're having a lot of volume. And moving on to why you should not invest in Bitcoin is just design issues. It's saying that because Bitcoin was a, the first big cryptocurrency to get all the attention, it has a first mover advantage. So all everyone knows about Bitcoin, but not everyone knows about Ethereum, Ripple, Dash, Monero, and all the other altcoins or the biggest altcoins. So a lot of people just connect cryptocurrency to Bitcoin and that's about it. When in reality, there are over 1,500, big, or 1500 cryptocurrencies out there. Okay, touching on the same point, competing cryptocurrencies. Because there are so many other cryptocurrencies, there's a lot of competition. I wouldn't necessarily agree here with this point too much in a certain degree yes but a lot of the different cryptocurrencies out there have different uses so we shouldn't just compare one by one bitcoin to to let's say even ethereum they're not they they're not out there for the same purpose bitcoin is just a store of value ethereum it's a network it has different purposes and it's being used for icos and all that so this this is a Valid point to a certain degree, but again, not a big deal. And lastly, more people are not paying attention to Bitcoin. So a lot of people are worried that the hype is over. Everyone invested in it. Everyone invested in Bitcoin and now it's going to crash and keep going down. But there are several graphs showing that Bitcoin can still grow a lot. I'm not going to show those graphs just because they buy be misleading. But pretty much what they show is if everyone in the world were to use Bitcoin, then the value would reach like $1 million, which it can, it can get to that point as well as it can. It might never get. We might just see the price start going down forever until it fades away. So no one knows the future. That's one thing we should always have in mind when investing. In the stock market anywhere you're investing no one knows the future and there's a quote i found it was interesting from this website unassuming banker and he's just comparing bitcoin and blockchain the technology behind bitcoin and i'll just read it real really quickly to illustrate imagine that someone had found a cure for cancer and posted the step-by-step -step instructions on how to make it online freely available for anyone to use. 
Now imagine that the same person also created a product called Cancer Pill using their own instructions, trademarked it, and started selling it to the highest bidders. I think we can all agree a cure for cancer is immensely valuable to society. In this case, the cure for cancer would be blockchain. However, the cancer pill, how much would you pay for it? Because he's comparing the cancer pill to Bitcoin. He just, he made the blockchain available to everyone, but he's using uh, Bitcoin. He's selling his, in a way, his cancer pill for a lot more that a lot of people think it's worth. So personally, I think the price will start going up eventually. I don't know if it'll ever reach one million five hundred thousand dollars but there there are definitely going to be other cryptocurrencies that are going to improve on bitcoin because bitcoin has a lot of issues with how many transactions it can take per second and that's one of the big issues they're trying to solve when compared to other cryptocurrencies that are already out and already have solved that problem so I hope you guys enjoyed this video talking a little bit about why you should or should not invest in 2018 on Bitcoin. And again, it is up to you. These are just a, a few of the facts. You should do your own research before investing. But leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment if you like this video and I'll post more. See you next time.